Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We are so happy you joined us today mm. because Terry and I are really getting tired of staring at each other. No, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's getting to me. <laughs> we hope everyone is safe, healthy, and staying at home. It really is the only way to stop the virus. We can do this, folks. It's not for a very long time. Yes. Think about how many times you've gone to work and thought, oh, I wish I could just stay at home. This is your chance. <laughs> Take advantage. That's a good attitude. Okay, this week has been a bit of a roller coaster for us, as I'm sure it has for everyone else. Terry worked so hard to finish issue number nine of five years. Mm -hmm. We got it to the printer. They shipped the books out to Diamond. While the books made it to Olive Branch in Mississippi, just fine, but the pallet, uh, the pallets that were headed to New York did not make it before Diamond closed their warehouse. So, they are now wandering around the U.S. and we're waiting for their arrival because our warehouse is closed and we have to meet them over there to let them in. Mm. We're not supposed to be out and about because we are not an essential business. So, it's all been very tricky. Yeah. Um, anyway. I can't keep up. Yeah. Uh, Diamond Will has half the shipment, the shipment going to the West. Uh, and they'll release that as soon as they reopen. And then we'll have the rest of the books going. We'll reship the rest of the books back to Plattsburgh when they reopen. So there will be a delay on the East Coast. But we're hoping that uh, issue number 10, the final issue of five years, will be out on time. We're hoping that Diamond reopens by then. Do you think it's possible that 9 and 10 will come out at the same time? Well, not on the East Coast. Maybe on the West Coast, but not on the East Coast because they won't have their books until we reship them. And I am sure it's going to be a backlog of stuff to get out. So sure. I assume that number nine will be out on the East Coast late. And then number 10 will be out late as well on the East Coast. I'm hoping on the West part of the country that it will, uh, number nine will go out right away and then 10 will go out at its usual time. But we do have a, we did go ahead and put the print version up on our website, and we also put a PDF version up uh, if you don't have a way to get your mail right now. Um, also, you can uh, call your local comic book shop or email them, however you work with them, and they can order it for you, mm -hmm. and then they'll get it as soon as Diamond ships it. Also, Comixology has it up right now, so you've got several ways to get it if you just can't wait. Yeah, it's kind of a, a thing where if if you're a subscriber, you manage to get it before things shut down. And then uh, if you uh, want to wait for your shop, you can, of course. Uh, we need to support our shops. Uh, but for the few people that use our um, direct feeds, you know, we have it available. Some people like to get it right away, like, you know, if in Europe, the Netherlands or things like that, you know, or rural places in the United States where a comic shop isn't really just around the corner. So just Europe, the Netherlands? Where did you come up with that? I was actually <laughs> thinking of Michael, my buddy in the Netherlands who actually, you know, stays on top of these things. So the Netherlands is looking for the comic. Yeah, if, if your name is Michael and you're in the Netherlands, we got one on the way. <laughs> Okay, other than that, this week, we are just filling orders and trying to get ahead. Terry's working on a project that I've wanted him to do for a couple of years. And when he gets a little further into it, I'm sure we'll make an announcement. So he's working on that and the final issue of five years. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he can get ahead. Wouldn't that be something? That would be a first. It would be. <laughs> Even when I did the first issue, I wasn't ahead. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> How can that be? Okay, let's move on to our questions. Okay. We have two questions today, so uh, one reader and two questions, so that'll do it for us, from our friend Brett Bottomley. Okay, so he says, this may be a hard one. How are the Diamond and LCS shutdowns affecting you as a creator? It does affect me, Brett, because I'm thinking about... Um, I'm thinking about our buddies, our, our friends on the front line uh, that have supported me for my entire career. Um, so that means a lot to me. Uh, I have, I, you know, my career exists because of the support of the front line, the retail shops. So, uh, you know, we're kind of, they're my partners. So, yeah, it's very important to me. Um, 
as we explained, there's always in the previous moment, we there's always the rural customers that live in the middle of farmland that don't use uh, local comic shops. So we supply our books to them. But um, in terms of like my creative work, uh, how to work these issues, I don't know what else to do except keep my head down and keep making the book. Uh, the one piece of advice retailers always gave me in the early years was just keep making the book. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna keep making these issues and, and uh, having them ready as soon as they can get to them. So I think it's difficult for you and other uh, independent creators who are putting out your own stuff and you're not supported by a big company behind you because you have all the, the publishing stuff on your mind as well. So you don't get to just focus on the comic book, the creation of it. You, you're still thinking about, well, I've got to get over there to the warehouse and let them in, that kind of thing. That's so I think true. it makes it a little more difficult. It's true. I'm not a penciler for Marvel, you know. So it's it, we we make one book, and um, so it ha if it's going to get from here to you, we have to do the first bit, and then trucking companies and all that. Um, so yeah, Robin's right about self-publishing. So so I think does it does kind of. Um, Kind of upset the creative flow a little bit yeah but i've noticed once you get into the swing of it once you really get into the story you kind of keep your head down and and go so yeah yeah once i'm into the once i'm in the drawing mode i, I stay in the drawing mode but when i get away from the drawing table it's all like okay here's our problems for today what are we going to do how can we help but i will say as the publisher that it really has gutted us um once Diamond closes down, nobody's buying our books anymore. Once the, they can't ship them. Once the comic book shops close down, nobody's buying our books anymore. And that's how we make our living. Mm -hmm. So um, we are hanging in there and hoping for the best. So these are pretty deep questions from Brett. Yeah. Certainly on our minds Well, I, it's, I'm sure it's on everybody's mind. Yeah. And Terry's not the only independent creator. There are lots of guys out there doing the same thing we're doing. And... Uh, it really is a, a challenge right now. So please support all the independent creators. Uh, just give them, give them some help if you can. Yeah. It's, this is how we make our living. Yeah, it is. Okay, Brett's next question is, if the big two, this is another, oh gosh. If the big two publishers go to self-distribution, will that hurt self-publishers like yourself? That's really geared towards me. And I think the answer is yes, it will hurt us because they will no longer be in the diamond catalog and we're we're kind of, okay, they order Marvel, they order DC, Image, Boom, Dark Horse, uh, IDW, all of those, and then they order Abstract Studio because it's in the book, it's in the catalog. If Diamond, if Diamond no longer has Marvel and DC in the catalog, those retailers are going to be harder pressed to make the effort to find us specifically. And if that is the case, we may self uh, distribute ourselves. It's a lot of work for one little book, but um, trust us, we're not going away. We'll find a way to make it happen. So um, yes, it will hurt us, Brett. And, and I know Diamond will do what they can do to support the, um, the, the publishers that are still in the catalog, but it will hurt everyone because now you have to go to two or three or four different places to place your order, which is which is harder for a comic book shop. You know, it takes more time and uh, more research. So, and you know, when you're trying to take something down, the first thing you do is separate them, and so that would be a, it would be a negative effect to separate us all. Everybody's on their own. Um, but the big companies get to do what they want. It, it's not up to, uh, we can't blame them for wanting to make a change. We have to, adapt. Uh, yeah, we have to make a change as well. And sometimes change is good. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna play, um, play our own game and hope you guys support us. I would love to see a change that is way, way better. 
And you never know. You never know. Yeah. So that's where we are with all that. Phew. Pretty. It was deep. It was pretty heavy for this week, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> you guys send me some new questions. All your business <laughs> stuff hurts my head. I was just thinking, ooh, smiley face. Yeah. Terry likes the smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, do you have anything else? No, I mean I'm gobsmacked by that question. <laughs> so it's it's it, and it is very very relevant. It's we're all walking around thinking about it constantly. So yeah, good question. But there are answers out there, and we'll find them. So yeah. just hang in there with us, and we appreciate your support, and we certainly appreciate your continued support. Yeah, thank you. So as all the independent creators do, and and um, all the comic book shops as well. Yeah. So. We are um, we're doing family. our best to give them product, and we'll continue to do it as long as they want to take it. So yeah, it's 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 a small industry actually, and uh, most of us know each other, so it, it's a personal thing. We all try, we all want it to work. Okay, so are you doing um, a, a drawing tutorial today? Yeah, I have a little one. I I've, I was thinking I have two different things on my mind. I wanted to uh, draw faces and expressions today, but for some reason I also want to draw Batman. So why don't we take uh, see how many expressions we can get on Batman? On Batman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's make it. You know, if you if I say, oh, let's draw a cartoon character, you think, oh, I can picture you doing every expression. I, I didn't think you liked Batman. I don't. I don't like Batman. This, which is why we need to draw him. So oh, okay. how many how many different expressions, new expressions can we get on Batman that you've never seen before? That would be a challenge. Okay, you need to play nice. Play nice? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys. Um, have a good week and everybody stay healthy and stay home. And uh, Terry will do his tutorial. Oh yes. I hear. So this is my sketchbook from when I was ten. So my love for superheroes goes way back. Just wanted to prove that before I dive into this. <laughs> uh, and I, I learned expressions from cartooning. You know, you can do it as simple as smiley faces. Um, but there's so many expressions in Saturday morning cartoons, as opposed to superheroes, which tend to have two expressions, grimmer, grimmer, as I referred to before. So... When you're getting into somebody with a mask, like Batman is a good example, how do you get a bigger range than scowl and um, maybe that happy smile at the end of a good adventure? A job done well. Uh, so that's something that I was always curious about. When I was starting to get the ability to draw and I felt more freedom, I would experiment with things like, okay, nauseous Batman. What if he stopped for road food and got a bad batch? <laughs> or we've got um, a Batman who is uh, maybe not appropriate in crowds. What if this guy has a bad thought? What if he has a, a wicked scheme? What if he has booby trapped something for Robin, like he put grease on the pole to the Batcave? Or maybe he has other problems. Um, we don't need to describe what this expression is, um, but I bet it's one we've never seen in the comic. Um, okay, let's get a little more serious here. Batman takes a lot of punches in the stomach. At some point, one of them's got to hurt or break a rib. Uh, that's what it might look like. Or that could be an old man without teeth. It's funny how we make that expression when we uh, get punched in the stomach. Um, what if he's the Batman who just stays at his computer 24-7 for years on end, uh, eating Hot Pockets and uh, drinking diet soda, letting himself go? Maybe out of shape Batman is not so happy. So let's go back to the grim and grimmer. Uh, conversation. Here is the um, the angles that you work to get the grim. The scowling flat eyebrows, that set mouth, tight line. If uh, somebody really makes him mad, I'm Batman. There's your face. You bite the teeth, the, the jaw sets forward, those brows come together real hard, 
and even the angle of the head comes forward like a wolf. Um, that's very alpha male right there. What is the ultimate alpha male? Um, you start with the bulging eyes, the flared nostrils. You clench those teeth so hard you're breaking them. And uh, his blood pressure must be going through the roof right now. Um, so whatever veins are up there are popping. Bulging and popping. Oh my gosh, he even blew his ears out. <laughs> Okay, now we're just having fun. It's grim, grimmer, and oh my God. I think as a cartoonist, uh, you should enjoy uh, the silliness of the extremes. Um, you can go from uh, vein busting Batman to happy place in the stroke of a pencil. And it's all in good fun, guys. Uh, I, Love Batman and respect him. It's just a lot of fun to make uh, fun of somebody who can take it, uh, the big guy. with, And um, I've loved drawing Batman my whole life. Um, I make fun of his grim and grimmer uh, attitude sometimes, but, you know, he goes out there and gets the job done. And at the end of the day, I like to think that he comes home and has a martini or two and relaxes. And... Uh, talk some smack, or maybe sings opera in his big spacious mansion, the Bruce Wayne mansion. Or maybe he goes home and does live chats with fans. Who knows? But with a few changes of a pencil line here and there, you can change the expression so fast and go through so many different variations. Um, I would encourage you to try that. Uh, don't get stuck drawing Batman one way. Do this. Just, just go crazy and, and try all the ex human expressions that we make and see what you get. You just never know. You may even get Zorro Batman out of it. What a great find that was. I think the point is use your cartooning right now, especially now. Just make yourself smile and have fun. Um, all these characters are here to entertain you. Uh, let them do that. And if you can draw, you know, have fun. Make yourself smile. So have a good week. Smile. And uh, read more comics.